Welcome to another episode of On The Mat Today. Today we're going to look at Lotus Pose. Also another version of it is Easy Pose, which I'm actually sitting in now. So the symbolism, we're going to get right to that today for Lotus Pose, is looking at the flower. Some people know Lotus as a lily or, you know, floating in the lake. So that flower has to grow in the water and up out of the mud. And then the flowers and petals unfold up into the light. So the symbolism there is the mud in the water is our everyday physical life, the things that we need to do, food, things that, need, that we need to support us, water. But within that, we need to center ourselves and also look up and unfold into our authentic self, into the light, into this spiritual awakening, whatever that looks like for you. So the intention for Lotus Pose is unfolding, finding a place where we are centered, where we are aligned, and I'm going to show that in the pose, and that in doing so, we're living our everyday life, but we're also growing into our authentic self. So for mat support today, I have this little table beside my mat. And because I'm working just right here, um, you can take the table off a little bit away from the mat if you're going to be using the whole mat. But the crystals I have chosen are smoky arutilated quartz. They have iron and different things in them that make them a dark and a light color. So with this pose, it aligns when we're working at all seven chakras. Now, if you don't know what chakras are, real quick, they're energy centers that go from the root of the body up and through, out through the head. We will get to more on those later. But this is showing that kind of dark, rooted in the earth color, as well as the light, higher frequency. I also have here a tarot card. The Ace of Cups is called the, t the Lotus of the Tarot Cards. Now I know you probably think about tarot cards, you're pulling the card to see what comes up, but we can also intentionally pull a card because this is like writing an intention down. This card shows um, new beginnings in life that happen when we are on this spiritual growth, this path of coming to an understanding about who we are. And in doing so, we find this peace and this joy. So by setting the card here, we are setting that intention with an image. We also can set candles, dark and light. Again, caution in burning them if they're going to be too close to you, but they can sit here just symbolically. The other thing I pulled was cedarwood essential oil because this oil helps us to detoxify the body and emotion, helps us to communicate and to think better so that we can be open to this spiritual awakening, to finding our authentic self. And again, all the different ways that you use essential oils, whether it's diffusers, um, putting them in a carrier oil, putting them on you, uh, dropping them onto your crystal can be utilized. So we have a lot of versions of this pose today, so I want to get right into the pose. Let's first address the counterindications. Now, first one, our knees are really bent. So if you have trouble with your knees, you're going to want your legs out a little bit. Ankles were crossed in the pose, and so again, problems with the ankles, you may not want to cross them. Um, it's a hip opener, so if we have problems with our hips, then you're going to want to build this pose up. So let me show you how to do that. If you have any of these counterindications, how do we build this pose up comfortably? Well, the first one is to take a bolster or a pillow, push it right up to our mat, and just kind of sit on it, letting the legs come down. I don't find this comfortable personally because I find that I kind of I let go with my back. So another way that we can do that is to take a, a blanket, and if you notice, the blanket is kind of halfway up the mat, so coming down onto a blanket instead of being on that bolster is a little more comfortable for me. 
And then we might need to still support the knees and the legs so we can use blocks to do that. Now for me personally, if I have a block under the knee, this area is a little sensitive to the touch. So I like to take another blanket and put them over the blocks. And now you're gonna have a lot of play here to see what feels comfortable for you. The blocks may wanna be right under the knees and the legs might need to come out. They might kind of be pushed more underneath the thighs. You're really going to have to just scoot them around until you find the place where this pose is comfortable for you. Okay, so let me clear this so that we, now that we've seen the supported easy pose, I want to get into the particulars of building to regular lotus pose. Now regular lotus pose is a bit of a challenge even though it's seated and it's definitely not going to be for everybody but I want to be able to address it. So the first thing that I want to address is that alignment. So let me turn to the side for a minute. We really when we're doing lotus pose want to make sure that we have this proper alignment that we're centered into our spine because we want to find this steadiness, but we want to have ease in the pose. So how do we do that? Well, we're sitting into our sit bones, making sure they're nice and flat, but we also want to watch that we have natural alignment to the curves in our spine. So we don't want to tip back too far because then we're starting to engage muscles and we're making it harder for us to breathe because we're collapsing down onto our rib cage. We also don't want to over exaggerate and kind of tip forward because then again now I can feel this in my outer thigh muscles. I'm starting to engage muscles, the muscles going up the sides of my back, so I'm not having ease in the pose. I want to sit up nice and straight, take the shoulders up and back, even kind of pull the chin like in and down so it's nice and parallel to my mat. And find this nice structure, find this ease in breathing and in sitting in this pose. So let me turn back around and let's look at, for some of you, you may not, if you have knee issues, you have ankle issues, you're not even gonna wanna try the full lotus pose. You're just gonna wanna stay in easy pose, but maybe you'd be interested in seeing what it looks like and some people may not have any of these issues, have more flexibility in the hips and wanna try it. So let's look at how we build toward it. So the first thing we're going to do is what's called fire log pose. We're going to take the calf and we're going to make it uh, parallel to the body. We're going to flex the foot and we're going to do the same with the other one as we build it ankle over knee. Again, we're sitting up straight. And if we have any discomfort, then I want you don't, don't stay in the pose. If you feel too much of a stretch, you want to back off of that. But if you're feeling comfortable here, you can take your hand on to that upper thigh and kind of just with a little bit of gravity, a little bit of weight there, it's giving a little more stretch to the thigh muscle that we're going to use in the full pose. And then another thing we can do is take our hand underneath the ankle, underneath the knee, and we're kind of lifting the leg toward the body. They call it rocking the baby. So you can move the leg, you can move it up and down. Again, we're watching our limits, really paying attention to the body that if anything here is uncomfortable, we're not forcing a stretch here. And we're going to do that on both sides. So again, calf parallel, butt flexed, and stack. Make sure we're nice and tall, and we're going to put that hand right on to the thigh. And then taking the hand underneath the ankle, under the knee, we're lifting it up and bringing it toward the body or back and forth, giving a little bit of a workout to that thigh muscle, getting it really nice and ready. Now for me in particular, that is comfortable. I can do all of those things comfortably without really feeling too much of a stretch. However, getting into actual lotus pose is not comfortable and as you can see, as I put my feet on top of the legs, my knee no longer reaches the floor. So full lotus pose is not a pose for me. I am going to do easy pose, but I did want you to see how it looks, and it would look a little bit better in a person that had the flexibility in order to do it. Okay, so 
So I'm going to go back into Easy Pose. Whichever version you like, Lotus or Easy, go ahead and get in that now. Um, I want to show you what I call Lotus Unfolding. So it's a little bit of a mini flow. What I mean by that is we're going to pair our breath with movement. Now there's a pose called Breath of Joy, which is a standing pose, and this is kind of my seated variation of it that I like to do in Lotus or Easy Pose. So in order to do that, we're going to start to pair the breath with our movement. So I don't know if you're familiar with cat and cow, but basically we're kind of um, arching the back and rounding the back when we do that pose. So if we do a seated version of it and we pair breath, when we inhale, we want to tip the hips forward and arch the back and look up. And then as we're ready to exhale, we're going to tip the hips back, round the back, and look forward. So shoulders are going to come into play too. So as we inhale, tip the hips forward, arch the back, take the shoulders back, look up. And as we exhale, we're going to tip the hips back, round the back, shoulders forward, and we're looking down. Now let's add in the next round of breath, our arms. So as we inhale, tip forward, round the back, take the arms up nice and wide, whatever's comfortable, look up. And as we exhale, we're going to tip back, arch the back, bring the arms in in a nice hug, round the shoulders forward, and we're looking down. Let's try that again. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Good. So you're just matching that breath with this nice movement and we're literally unfolding. Did you feel that freedom when you do the pose? When I come out like this, it's such wonderful freedom and I come down and I give myself a hug for it. So I'm literally unfolding literally the lotus. Now while there is a supine version of this pose where you're just down on your back and the legs stay exactly as they are and go up the wall, for the today when we do the next part I'd really like you to just find easy pose or lotus. I want you to find that steadiness, that ease in being in this pose. So today instead of a meditation we're going to do a mudra which is a hand positioning and a mantra. So there is a lotus mudra and we're basically making the flower with our hands. We're going to take the sides of the thumbs together and round until the sides of the pinky to, are together and then the fingers are our kind of petals. And we're going to pull this in to heart center. And we want to think about that flower opening to love not only for others, but love to ourselves. So we're pulling attention in towards heart center. Now the mantra that I want to go through uh, literally means the jewel is in the lotus. So again, we're finding that alignment, that happiness inside of us, especially in heart center just in our solar plexus, we are just loving ourselves as well as loving others when we're in this alignment. So for a moment, let's go through what the mantra is. Now let's say, I'll say it fully first. Om Mani Padme Hum. So if we look at these individually, Om, you may have heard that before. It's the primordial sound of all creation. And Mani, M-A-N-I, is the jewel. So what does the jewel represent? Well, it dissolves our attachments to pleasures, fleeting pleasures in this life. And that helps us to ready ourselves for this um, finding our authentic being. When we get past all of that attachments that we have to things in this life. Now Padme is the lotus, that's P-A-D-M-E, and that dissolves attachments to pre prejudices and judgment. 
And those are not just towards others, but also the way that we judge ourselves. And then whom, H-U-M, this cultivates the innate wisdom we have inside of us to help us come in to this spiritual awakening. So if we take our hands into the Lotus Mudra, we're bringing them to heart center. We're in whatever version of Lotus pose that we're in. And then we're going to repeat the mantra. Let's do it three times. Om. that as many times as you like as feels comfortable for you. Now what I'd like to do now is to get you to start to journal. We brought up a lot of things in just these last 15 minutes. And so one thing you can do afterwards is to journal just on what came up for you in your practice. And so when we're journaling, the great thing about easy pose is we can take a couple of blocks. When we're in the pose, we can take our bolster and we can build ourselves a nice little table. That way we can grab a journal and a pen and we can get to journaling directly after while we're still on our mat. Now, if there wasn't anything in particular that came up for you during the pose. Another journaling idea for this is just based on the word unfolding. What would it look like if you unfolded into your authentic self? How would it feel? What would it look like every day if you found your center, your alignment? What attachments, what prejudices would you have to get rid of towards yourself? and maybe towards others, in order to really find that joyful, peaceful period in your life. And if you don't like that, I'm going to give you a third option to journal on. So one thing that I really like to do is to take a song that inspires me. You know that song that you put on when you're not in a great mood, when you wake up in the morning and you've got to go out and do something anyway, whether it's work or an appointment or whatever. And so you kind of put that song on the radio while you're driving in the car, or the one that maybe gets you ready in the morning and gets you out of the house. Play that song, sit in easy pose, put your hands just on your knees, or maybe find that lotus mudra again, and play the song, just listen to the words. And when it's done, write down the feelings, the emotions, that it comes up in you, hopefully it's empowered you, hopefully that's one of the words um, that you write down. And then after you start to feel that empowerment in tune with your authentic being, then start to journal about what your authentic self can look like. So that's my kind of assignment for you after you practice the pose is to go ahead and do that. And then just one more little thing I'd like to show you really quick. If you'd like to do this pose, um, and again, this pose doesn't have to be done on a mat. It can be done in a chair, it can be, or a couch, or a bed, or whatever. But if you'd like to do it supine, just let me leave you with how that would look. So you're coming up to the wall. I kind of like to sit with my hip against the wall. And then I kind of like to put a blanket down for my back and my head, and I'm just going to kind of roll up as I come down so I can lay down here and have my legs up. If, again, the knees aren't comfortable, the legs can go into a legs up a wall straight kind of pose. And so this is the restorative if you'd like to do that sometime. And when you're in that, you could still do your, your mudra. You could do your mantra, um, 
in that restorative pose in the evening as well. Sometimes when I'm in bed, I like to do it and just turn around to my stack of pillows and put my legs in, in this pose up onto the stack of pillows. Okay, so that's all I have for you today, and we'll see you next time. Namaste.